Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today is called Misty Pond. It's a miniature three and a half by three and a half painting, and I painted this probably back in, uh, I'm guessing, October, maybe November last year uh, when I was doing quite a few mini paintings. Um, just thought it'd be cool to, you know, bring in a mini painting. Um, before I forget, if you like this video, would you please just just try lifting that arm. Just see if you can get it up off the chair and move it over to the mouse. And then once you're you're, you're on the mouse, use your finger on that clicky part and um, click on the thumbs up icon. That's assuming you do like this video, and if you do not like this video, then um, nobody cares. Nobody wants to know, so don't worry about that. Just actually turn it off and go away. <laughs> anyway, cracking myself up here. Also, um, I'll pop this uh, little painting in my store. And um, sorry if there's some background noise. I guess the neighbor just decided to start mowing his lawn, of course, as I um, decided to do video. Hopefully, this, this new microphone's working out pretty good. I'm going to move it a little bit. Um, it's designed for, like, telephony or whatever, but uh, seems to do a pretty good job of dropping out background stuff. And um, also, when I go uh, painting or popsicle, I don't get a popping sound, which is awesome. So that is great. Um, so let's talk about this. So what's the story with Misty Pond? Well... I've actually painted this scene quite a few times. I uh, originally painted it back in like 2008 as a horizontal, probably five by seven or maybe six by eight. I think that painting might be in my mom's living room. Um, it's a little tree that was by this stream, overhanging the stream, and I would pass this uh, scene on my bicycle when I was um, pedaling to my job as a uh, commercial illustrator. Uh, and I was fortunate enough as a commercial illustrator to have a regular gig where I didn't have to work freelance. I just, you know, I showed up and I did whatever was required and I got a paycheck. And so that was, you know, it's pretty rare for commercial illustration. So I feel, always felt very fortunate to have that. Anyway, at that time I would ride my bike maybe 10 miles uh, each way, each day. They, Kind of get some exercise because you're counteracting the um, uh, the sitting behind the desk thing, you know. Anyway, um, my idea on this was to kind of you know inject it with a certain glow, and also there was a hell of a lot of complexity in the reference photo which you're not seeing uh, because I'm not going to paint it in there. Um, and actually, for that reason, I think I've done this as a vertical as well, 8x10 maybe a few years back, but every time I do it it looks completely and utterly different and I think one of the reasons for that is the extensive detail in the reference photo, so every time I take a crack at it um, I'm doing some really really extensive simplifying and uh, I guess that'd be a good thing to maybe kind of put the focus of this video on is like well, whether you're working in plein air outdoors or you're working with reference photos, either way, um, you're being a, uh, your eye is being assailed by a plethora of detail. I mean, the closer you get to anything, of course, the more detail you'll see. But detail and landscape paintings really don't go together very well. Now, I'm going to, uh, I've just made a policy or a rule, but I'm going to start off by saying that I have seen this rule broken and broken very, very well by some painters and um, who do extensive amounts of detail. In fact, there's a really good painter out here in um, Fongare who does paintings that are extensively detailed, but also really you just go into them, you feel they're great, they feel awesome, they're wonderful paintings. So you can do it, but let me tell you, you better be a special kind of person because uh, most of the time what happens when people just copy all the detail from the reference photo or the scene that they're observing in nature uh, to the canvas, 
uh, things get super tight and uncomfortable and unpleasant for people to look at and this defeats the purpose of producing a landscape painting uh, as far as I'm concerned it totally defeats the purpose because why would you want to have a a, a, a landscape painting on the wall of your home well you want to have a little a little thing that you can look at and it, that relaxes you and it makes gives you a nice feeling and it gives you uh, you know one of the things we do as painters is uh, we are showing people how we observe nature through the lens of our own artistry and that is very valuable but and now granted I'm sure there are some landscape painters out there that paint really hostile ugly um, and um, violent <laughs> landscapes I'm not aware of any off the hand uh, off hand but it's it's got to exist because if I can if I can voice the concept you know somebody's done it but but for the most part what pe what I feel people want what I want from a landscape painting is I want to have something on the wall that I can go into and relax and um, it reminds me you know you can you can bring in additional layers on top of that like uh, uh, layers of um, um, spirituality and philo philosophy and and so on and so forth you can certainly move people through the use of color and composition I mean this is what it's all about for me but if you're going to move people it seems to me that you should be trying to move them in a way that is um, somewhat uplifting and somewhat positive and if you can't do that then um, I don't know it seems to me you ought to maybe question why you're working at all and then that gets into modern art which I have uh, if you dig around maybe 300 250 videos ago uh, you'll see there's several rants on modern art I'll spare you today I'll spare you all that I have opinions though and uh, anyone who was really interested to hear them that hasn't heard them already could find them but getting back to the detail thing so what happens when you start thinking you think a lot of times um, especially uh, amateur painters think uh, well the I really like when things are detailed so I'm gonna just keep adding detail and a lot of times what they'll do is they will add detail when they haven't even got the big shapes right and the sort of hope that they're saving they're gonna save their work if they just render those flowers um, you know somewhat accurately and the fact of the matter is flowers or weeds or leaves on a tree it could be anything it could be little pebbles on the beach any any little specific detail what's really important with landscape painting is to get your big shapes right and then to set up a sort of fracture with the brushwork that gives the impression of detail and I like to do that and as a matter of fact if you go to my website um, like for this for this the there'll always be a corresponding blog post to the latest video so if you were interested you could tip on over there it's landscape painter coming Z or Cohen Z as we would say in the US but uh, I'm currently living in New Zealand so they all say NZ out here or NZ we don't they don't say NZ I say NZ because I'm an American but whatever um, you head on over there you'll see I usually put up um, several different um, versions of the uh, painting I'll put up a fairly high-res image and then I put up uh, two zoom-ins and the extreme zoom-in zoom in will always show you the interlacing fracture of the brushwork and um, one of the things I love about uh, photographing my paintings is that uh, you really get a great um, opportunity when you use a good lens and a high-res camera to see every stroke and how they work together to create an impression of detail, an impression um, that is still quite loose and can breathe and that's how I tend to look at it and think about it. You want things to be able to breathe, you want air to be able to get in and out of the strokes. If you start overworking the painting or you start over delineating or over rendering things, 
um, you might be very, very proud of the efforts that you're. And I'm speaking from personal experience, by the way. I should say that. So don't don't think that I'm not uh, that I was immune to any of these things. I've learned all of this the hard way. Um, but maybe if you listen to me, you could save yourself some trouble. Or if you've got some failed paintings that have been plaguing you, you're looking at, you might might be able to to realize what the problem with them is now. Um, that uh, you, it's been pointed out that they were overworked, over detailed, and um, and then you, actually we've got a few minutes here, so I can expound upon this a little further. Um, if you have the big shapes right, if you have your values right, and you have attractive uh, an attractive um, pattern of color you can probably get away with a lot of detail because everything big is right and will function from a distance quite quite nicely if you do not have these big shapes right there is no amount of detail that will save your painting as a matter of fact you're just wasting your time you would be much better off just doing another painting really um, turning it towards the wall or uh, you know because uh, actually sometimes you can put these things away you might figure out a way to save them later but it's very hard to save a painting that's over detailed without actually just destroying it because you'll have patches of the painting that are extensively detailed and then when you're coming in trying to you know kind of hack away at it and improve it those those passages won't be detailed and uh, it just isn't, isn't going to work so um, kind of a heads up there. I know I've addressed this in the, well, let's face it, I think we're actually well past 500. I, I kind of, I kind of just went whizzing by the 500 mark without really noticing. I was thinking of doing something special, but actually that's 500 videos, but it's not actually 500 videos that everyone can watch because some of those videos go out to only people on the mailing list or people that have, um, um, there's a few videos from the old days there where uh, it was just a show or an opening I'd had and things like that. Uh, it's sort of fun to maybe now and again go look at the bottom of someone's uh, video feed and, and see what they were doing. But I've been doing this for like four and a half years now. And so, um, yeah, I'm pretty, uh, you know, prolific at it. Uh, I don't, wouldn't say I'm great at it. <laughs> But I'm prolific and uh, consistent, and so if you if you like what I'm doing, you know it's going to be pretty consistent from week to week, and that's I think why we're we're building up a decent following here. Yeah. So uh, now, of course, this detail thing. You know, if you wanted to detail something like this, a tiny little painting, like a three and a half by three and a half, uh, you're going to use a pretty small brush. You might notice too that the brush that I'm using is not terribly small. It's actually a bit uncomfortable and that's another thing I recommend always use a brush that's you know you can get the job done with it but it's a little bit uncomfortable it's a little bit uncomfortable the reason for this is that this will give you the expressive brushwork this will give you um, you know we will be able to tell that it was a painting not a photo and not some over rendered illustrative type of thing you know so anyway, thank you for joining me today. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, watching this little mini, mini painting um, happen. And uh, like I said, uh, like the video if you haven't already, please. And um, it's going to be in the store for a fair price. Uh, yeah, I'm not real sure what that's going to be on this mini painting yet, but, but it'll be fair. And um, anyway, tip on over and check it out if you're interested. And I'll be back real soon with another video um, actually probably got a past master lined up for the weekend uh, unless I have the uh, you know enough time to get into a bonus video which isn't looking that good this week so until I see you again thank you for joining me and um, please take good care of yourself your family your loved ones random strangers all of them and while you do that please stay out of trouble